Basquiat War College. A fortress of stone and steel it loomed against the jagged peaks, a testament to the iron will of the Navarian Empire. Within its walls, echoes of clashing steel and roars of captive dragons painted a picture of relentless training. Only the best, the fiercest, survived. Can't tackle that TBR pile, don't have time to read, we've got you covered. Welcome back to the BookFox Summaries bringing literature to life one summary at the time. So, grab a kappa, get comfy, and join us on this incredible journey through the world of literature. Today we dive into a one of the best fantasy romance fiction book of 2023, The Empyrean Hash One, Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Each year, a new batch of hopefuls walked through its imposing gates, dreams of glory burning bright in their eyes. But Basgiath devoured weakness, chewed it up, and spat it out. Here, under the ever-watchful gaze of the winged guardians, the elite dragon riders of Navarre, one learned to fight, to kill, to survive, or die, trying. Violet Sorengale felt a tremor run through her as she crossed the threshold, the weight of her ancestors heavy on her slender shoulders. Her steps faltered, dwarfed by the sheer magnitude of the ancient archway. Above, a weathered inscription warned, Enter and be judged. It wasn't glory that filled Violet's heart, but a gnawing fear. She was no warrior, no daughter of a legendary general like her peers. Her lineage held no tales of valor, her veins pulsed with the blood of scribes, not soldiers. Yet here she was, thrust into this crucible of war, a single fragile flame in the face of a raging inferno. The courtyard buzzed with activity, a cacophony of clanging armor and boisterous laughter. Towering youths, their bodies honed for battle, sparred with a ferocity that sent chills down Violet's spine. They moved with a confidence she could only dream of, their laughter echoing with the certainty of their place in this brutal hierarchy. Every clang of metal, every guttural roar, seemed to mock her small stature, her lack of martial prowess. Doubt gnawed at her. What hope did she have in this den of wolves, a lamb disguised in borrowed armor? As Violet made her way through the throng, her gaze was drawn to the sky. Above, a winged silhouette pirouetted against the azure canvas, its scales glinting like a thousand jewels under the midday sun. A shiver, both of fear and awe, shot through her. The dragon dipped its wings, executing a breathtaking dive that sent the recruits scattering. It was a stark reminder here, survival was not just about conquering your fellow man, but also taming a creature of legend, a beast of fire and fury. The dragon was a symbol of power, of untamed might, and Violet, armed with her books and her wits, felt hopelessly outmatched. The first few weeks were a blur of exhaustion and despair. Each day began before dawn and ended long after the stars had painted the night sky. The training was brutal, designed to weed out the weak, to forge the remaining few into weapons of war. Violet, hampered by her lack of physical prowess, found herself constantly lagging behind. Her muscles screamed in protest, her body bruised and battered, yet she refused to yield. She clung to her determination with the tenacity of a weed growing through cracks in the pavement. While others trained their bodies, Violet honed her mind. She devoured military strategy scrolls, her fingers tracing battle formations and siege tactics. She learned the language of war, not through brute force but through cunning and intellect. In the quiet hours when her peers were nursing their wounds, she pored over ancient texts, her mind a sponge, soaking up knowledge. She knew her limitations, knew she could never match their strength, but she could outsmart them. She could anticipate their moves, exploit their weaknesses. She would fight, not with brute force, but with the sharp edge of her intellect. And then, there was the dragon lottery. The day when each first year was paired with a dragon, a bond forged in fire and blood. Violet watched with a mixture of envy and terror as her peers approached their destinies, some with bravado, others with barely concealed fear. She saw the arrogant sons of warlords brought to their knees by the sheer primal power of the beasts they sought to command. She saw the fear in their eyes as they realized that strength alone was not enough, and she knew, with a sinking heart, that her own encounter would be no different. When her name was called, a hush fell over the assembled throng. All eyes turned to her, a lone figure standing in the shadow of the dragon's spine, the colossal mountain range that loomed over the academy. The air crackled with anticipation, with a morbid curiosity that pricked at her skin. This was it, the moment of truth. Could she, Violet Sorengale, the scholar, the strategist, find a way to tame a creature of legend? 
Or would she become another casualty, her dreams crushed beneath the weight of her own inadequacies? The cavernous hall echoed with the rasping breaths of slumbering dragons. Violet's heart hammered against her ribs, each thud a drumbeat of fear. The air hung heavy with the smell of smoke and ozone, a potent cocktail that sent shivers down her spine. Her lamp cast flickering shadows that danced along the cavern walls, twisting familiar shapes into monstrous visages. Deeper and deeper she descended, each step carrying her further from the familiar world of books and parchment into the heart of the unknown. Before her lay a sight that stole her breath away, a magnificent beast, its scales the color of amethyst and sapphire, lay coiled in slumber. Its chest rose and fell with each exhalation, sending tremors through the air. The dragon's head crowned with horns that gleamed like polished obsidian lay resting upon its massive paws. Even in repose it radiated an aura of power that was both terrifying and exhilarating. This was no mere beast, but a creature of ancient magic, a being of legend and lore. Then, it opened its eyes. Two orbs of molten gold met hers, pinning her in place with their intensity. Time seemed to stop. The air crackled with unspoken power with the weight of millennia. In that instant Violet knew, this creature, this magnificent terrifying being would be her salvation or her doom. There was no middle ground, no room for compromise. It was a bond forged in fire, a dance with death itself. As Violet stood there, dwarfed by the sheer immensity of the dragon before her, a strange calm washed over her. Fear, though still present, morphed into something else. A sense of exhilaration, of challenge accepted. She had never been one for brute force, for the clash of steel and the thrill of the kill. But perhaps, just perhaps, there was another path to victory. A path of cunning, of wit, of understanding. She had always been a quick study, a master strategist. Could those skills, honed in the quiet solitude of the library, translate to this primal dance between predator and prey? Only time would tell. Life at Basgith was a whirlwind of brutal training and fierce competition. Yet, amidst the chaos, Violet found her place, not amongst the brash sons of warlords, but on the fringes, observing, learning, adapting. Her sharp mind became her shield, to exploit their weaknesses with a precision that left them bewildered, and often, enraged. Her bond with her dragon whom she named Nightshade deepened with each passing day. It wasn't the fiery, instinctive connection of the other riders but something different, a bond built on mutual respect, on understanding. She spent hours studying dragon lore, poring over ancient texts. In turn, Nightshade seemed to recognize her efforts, responding to her commands with a grace and precision. As the weeks turned into months, whispers of Violet and her unorthodox methods began to spread through the academy. Her peers, initially dismissive, began to watch, to learn. A shadow fell over Basgith, a creeping dread that seeped into the very stones of the academy. Rumors of a resurgent enemy, long thought vanquished, spread like wildfire through the ranks. The enemy, they called them the Onyx Legion, was like a phantom force, striking swiftly and silently, leaving behind nothing but carnage and fear. The atmosphere at Basgith shifted, the air thick with tension. The cadets, their youthful arrogance tempered by the looming threat, pushed themselves harder than ever before. The clang of steel echoed late into the night, a constant reminder of the war that raged beyond the academy walls. Violet felt a knot of dread tighten in her stomach. Was she, a scholar who had always preferred the company of books to the company of soldiers, truly ready to face such horrors? The day came when the graduating class of Basgeth War College stood before the assembled ranks of the Navarran army, ready to receive their wings and take their place as the newest protectors of the realm. Overhead, dragons soared, their scales glinting like a thousand stars against the azure sky. Violet stood among her peers, her chest tight with a mixture of fear and exhilaration. She had learned to fight, to kill, to survive. The emperor himself presided over the ceremony. He spoke of duty, of honor, of the sacrifices demanded of those who bore the weight of the realm upon their shoulders. As Violet stepped forward to receive her own wings, she was no longer the timid girl who had first walked through the gates of Basgia. She was a warrior, a dragon rider, a protector of the realm. For the fate of the Navarran Empire and perhaps the world rested upon her shoulders. Before we go, we ask for your help. Please subscribe to our channel. With your subscription, you are encourage us to create more summaries. Comments and recommendations are welcome. Hit the like button, share with friends and turn on notifications to stay in the loop. See you next time.